Oh yeah, it's time. Ginger Runner. What's up everybody, Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another GingerRunner.com review, and today, again, is a special day because I am reviewing two shoes, both from Newton. First up, the Newton Gravity 3. Yeah, it's real. Yes, as I said, I am reviewing two Newton shoes today. This is the Gravity 3. You're watching the review for this particular shoe, but if you would like to watch the review for the Distance 3, all you have to do is click that, click that shoe. I'll give you a couple seconds. Three, two, one. Welcome. All right, look at this bad boy. I have been waiting to review these shoes for months. This here is the Gravity, which is more of the trainer version. A lot of the technology is same between the Gravity and the Distance. So hopefully by the end of both of these reviews, I'll be able to tell you which one I prefer, if you had to choose between one or the other. But this particular model, the Gravity 3, as I mentioned, is more of the trainer version, and that is because it does feature a little bit more outsole material there on the bottom of the shoe, a bit more going on in the upper, a little bit more substantial of a shoe, a little bit heavier, but that doesn't necessarily detract from its performance. Let me also point out that this is my first review of a Newton shoe since the Boko AT, Boko at, Boko at, Boko. And I will say it is nice to be back in a real Newton. I had such a bad experience in the Boko at that I really was hoping that both the Gravity 3 and Distance 3 would really change my mind and get me back into Newtons. And you'll be happy to know that they do, in fact, embrace me back into the lug life, and I like it. All right, let's just get on to the review of the Gravity 3. As usual, I'll tell you things that I like and things that I dislike about this particular shoe. We'll grade it with some points, and then we'll have a party. BYOB. Okay, things that I like about the Newton Gravity 3. Five lugs. Look at this. The bottom of the shoe has five lugs on the bottom. It's nice to have a nice five lug trainer shoe from Newton finally giving us that wonderful stable platform built on their pop one technology. You can see it written right here on the side. So basically what they've done is they've taken that action reaction technology, added an additional lug to it, changed a little bit of the formula in here, and attempted to deliver the exact same feel that you are used to in a Newton, but in a more stable, wider five lug platform. One lug per metatarsal. I like it. I think that it works. It's nice to have that additional stability down below there. I really was a fan of the five lug system and the energy NR. So I'm so stoked to have that stability in the fifth lug into the meat and potato line of Newton the Gravity and the Distance. The upper. Now the upper is really nice on this particular shoe. It's really thin, really light, really airy, plenty breathable, but I really want to highlight the welded overlays. There's no more stitching. I remember that from the previous models of the shoes. There's tons of stitching. All the elements needed that stitching to keep it together, but this particular shoe uses nice welded design, so it's all really smooth. It's nice and seamless on the inside. Feels great. Really light toe box. Now it's really nice. The volume is really great on this particular toe box. There's some stretch panels here on either side, both medial and lateral. They allow that foot display. If you have a bit of a wider foot, you'll be thankful that those patches are there so they do expand a little bit with your foot. I never felt like my foot was too confined in this shoe. And that is kind of true along the Newton line in general. But with this new upper, new materials, I really, really dig that nice wide toe box. Looks. And this goes across the board. The new line of Newtons look great. And I'm not just talking just colors and stylistically. A lot of attention to detail here. A lot of the work, we have the 360 reflective paneling going on on the shoe. Beautiful laser cut overlays. Just really smart attention to detail here and I, I dig that and I appreciate it. Durability. Now I put more miles in this shoe than I have on the Distance 3 just because this was where my bulk of my miles fell was in the gravity. And I have to say it's holding up great. Not that any Newton I've had in the past has ever really failed me in the durability department, but this particular shoe just it's working. We're finally getting some lug wear on the front tips of the lugs, but after 40 miles or so, that's expected. Good durability. Heel drop. It's three millimeter drop, as it actually indicates on the midsole material here. Now with Newton's, when they say heel drop, I'm assuming it means when the lugs are actually depressed into the bottom of the shoe. Not sad, I mean pushed into the shoe. But I like that. I think that's a nice sweet spot for me. And especially in a Newton where you're going to spend most of your time in the midfoot, forefoot area anyways. And finally, flexible. It's far more flexible than its predecessor, and you can definitely feel it while you're in that shoe. It's really nice, definitely works with your foot. And let me add something. Despite the fact that it is extremely flexible in all directions, I would almost be curious to see what it would be like if you split these lugs down the middle and incorporated another groove plate so the shoe can flex even more right through the lugs. Is that technically possible? Who knows? I'd like to see it. Regardless, the shoe still manages to be far more flexible than a lot out there on the market. Now for things that is like, this is the big one, and this goes for both shoes, particularly to the Gravity 3, break-in period. Now when I've worn other Newtons in the past, the Distance 2, the Gravity, the Old Motions, I didn't feel like it took a long time to break the shoes in. You just kind of had to adapt to what a Newton was. Once you started breaking it into your rotation, it was really easy to get used to it and you could just begin to fly. 
In this particular shoe, I felt like I was having to work against the shoe to break it in before I even felt the pop, that famous Newton pop sensation. Whether it's the lugs being of a harder rubber outsole material or the membrane being of a stiffer rubber material, it just took a long time to get this shoe to feel right. I feel like I'm there now after about 35, 40 miles, but that's a long time to wait for the joy of a shoe compared to how long I would have to wait in the past, which wasn't very long at all. Wait, this shoe in my size weighs about nine and a half ounces, which for a trainer is fine. You're almost at that 10 ounce tipping point, but I gotta be honest, that's a little heavy for this particular shoe, especially when you have another shoe, the Distance 3, which is very similar, that weighs a good two ounces less that could do almost the same job of this shoe. This is a big one, price. 175 bucks for the shoe. That is the same price that Newton has had on this particular model for years, and it is just too expensive. I have to be totally honest. Now that I've been in the shoe game for a long time, I understand what it takes for a shoe to be built in a superior manner, to be durable, to be flashy, to be fun, and to work. This particular shoe, while it does in all of those categories, it is just too expensive. Especially when there are other shoes in their model line that I like the same, if not more, that are cheaper. I mean, hell, the Energy NRs are way cheaper. You can get those for around a hundred bucks right now. And while they might not have the same technology built into that forefoot, I still think they're comfortable and they will last you a long time. And finally, odor retention. It's a similar problem that I had with the Energy NR and that's because I think the upper is actually made of very similar materials. It just retains the stink. So be prepared if you've got stinky feet to either take a shower before you go for a run and after you go for a run or to hang these outside to dry because man, they hold it. Ah, so that's it. That's actually all I dislike about the Gravity 3. Again, I think it's a great shoe. I think the new Newton line is awesome. If you get a chance to get your hands or feet into a pair, I would definitely try it. If you're not into the Newton game, these shoes are particularly favored by the midfoot, forefoot strikers, or for those who are looking to transition into said running style. But as a warning with all Newton shoes that I would give to you if you were just starting out in them is to bring them into your shoe rotation very gradually. So that does it for my review for the Gravity 3. I think we need to get on with the points. Quality, I really like the new build quality out of all the Newtons. I think it's just top notch, really beautiful design, four out of five. Comfort, I'm gonna have to say four out of five. It's even a borderline three out of five just because that break-in period is so long. At least it was for me in this particular pair. Just kept thinking while I was running in the shoe, man, when is that membrane gonna break in so these lugs start moving into the shoe? And it just took a long time. And even now, I'm still like, oh, I'm on that borderline of are they breaking in yet? Ugh. Price, I gotta give it two out of five. 175 bucks is just expensive. And you'll see why if you watch my Distance 3 review. And finally, looks, five out of five. I love the looks of this shoe. I think the other color is also really awesome. I think the ladies' colors are even better. I wish they would make some of the ladies' versions available for men. That sounds weird. So that brings our grand total to 15 out of 20. It's a decent score. It's their new version, the 2014 Gravity 3 from Newton. Oh yeah, one review down. Have you guys watched the other review? That's right, I reviewed the Distance 3 as well. I think this is the perfect opportunity for you to just click that shoe and go over and check out that review. I, go ahead, do it. Three, two. One. So that is it for the Newton Gravity 3 review. Have you guys run in this particular shoe? I know it's been out for a long time, so maybe some of you own a pair or have run many long distances in this particular shoe. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of them. Do you have any issues with them? Do you love certain things about them? Let me know. Be sure to like, favorite, and share this video. Let others know that I reviewed the Gravity 3. And be sure to subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash The Ginger Runner. I'm posting two videos every single week, a review as well as a live show. That's right, every single Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I am doing a live broadcast where you get to interact with me or my special guest, depending on whatever Monday it is. We have some really excited guests coming up, so don't forget to tune in. I'm on all the social networks. You can find me on Twitter, at The Ginger Runner, over on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Ginger Runner, and of course, gingerrunner.com. And don't forget, I'm on Instagram, at Ethan Newberry. I'm posting cool photos from my runs all the freaking time. I hope you guys are getting out there, training hard, racing harder, and partying the hardest. I know I am. In the meantime, train, race, beer. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.